They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Garden. Mrs. Farmer, we're back in the garden again. Always. You know what, our beans are coming up. Now we have a late garden this year because of weather and because we got busy and got around to things a little too late. We're putting some cattle panels up right now. Now we uh, just did some Kentucky Wonder Beans and we got some more that we're gonna put up later. You know what they are? No. What Heirloom are beans. Oh good. Hopefully, talk to Brenda about that in just a little while. But for right now, listen to this. Isn't that beautiful? No, I'm deaf. Look, our corn's coming up behind us. Hopefully the Blue Jays won't do what they did last year, which was really Eat mean. Two weeks ago, we told you about our little experiment involving our buckets and tomatoes. Now, a lot of these ideas I am stealing from our good friend Bobby Joe. By the way, let's talk about the fact that Bobby Joe and Lois are celebrating their 60th anniversary. Wow. Congratulations! Woo! Will we make it to 60? <sighs> We'd have to be like 800 years old to do this. <laughs> Now we're just putting these cattle panels up so the beans can grow up there and make life easy when we decide to pick them. But I want to talk about our tomatoes, which are thriving. Now I got the bucket idea off of Bobby Joe, but he puts those lower. What I've done, I've taken these buckets and I've drilled a hole right where the roots are on these tomatoes. So even though it's dry out here, it's still damp around the bottom of the bucket. When it rains, it holds water in there. Nice. Look at those, those were tiny tomatoes two weeks ago. They're huge now. We're feeding them a little poodoo water, and they seem to be liking it. They seem to be thriving. You know what? We had a couple of people say, oh my gosh, how are you going to get the tomatoes out of the holes on the side of your cage? We're not. That was never our concern. That's why we built these really wide. And you tried it and I tried it too. We can reach every square inch of this whole plant. The main reason for this particular grate and this bucket is to keep that stem strong. So they're not going to go anywhere. They can go this way. They'll support each other as they grow in this wire and this bucket. We don't have to worry about going Reaching. through the sides. Great idea. We can reach every square inch, and that's why I made it extra wide. Yeah. That's about 67, after I measured about 67, 68 inches. Right. That gives us plenty, of, plenty of room. You can reach all the way to the bottom. It's still water in the middle. Still I like water it. in the middle. And look how that even though the rest of the garden is dry, around the base, we still have dampness. And those, look how deep, dark green those leaves they look are. They good. Those were tiny babies. They're like in the poodoo water. Yes, they are. Let's do a couple more panels. I think I got just about enough okay. for our beans so they can climb, so we won't have to bend over as much. I like that. I don't like to bend over I as much either. as I used to. <laughs> and you know what? One of our most popular segments in the last little bit has been Mr. John Akers. I wanted a, a really substantial smokehouse, one of them solid, right. stout, and I wanted it up there by the harvest cabin. Well, the cabin has a little 
buddy now. I like it. Let me tell you what, we're finally done. We're gonna take all these pieces and put them together so you can see how to make your own or have John come do one for you. That was my preference. Great idea. Take yeah, me, I like it that. take me 65 years to do it. Let's go visit the smokehouse. John. Sir. You need some help? Nope. <laughs> We're done. You know what? Look at this. This is beautiful. Now, I know you do good work, but I mean, you've outdone yourself on this, absolutely. Okay, you've even built a spot for my hickory? Yep. Now, let's, let's go over all the steps. We start over here with your base. We set the foundation. Set we the set foundation. the block. Put a base for our stove, set our foundation, put our outside frame, we lined it with fire brick. We set you a steel door on it. That's just a clean out door from a fireplace. Right. It'll utilize it just like it would anything else. It's gonna close up, let you draw, set your air flow through that. As you get it developed, we set the roof on top. The framework we set in place. framework was made stable by the siding we put on the outside of it. Western cedar, lap not western treated. cedar, not treated, it's a natural, there's nothing on it. You can, if you want later on, throw a little Thompson's water seal on top of the roof just to shed a little more water and let it soak it in. At the top of it, I cut you a port for the smoke to come out. Looking up the top of it there, you see I built your stack house. It sheds water. It's covered up. I put a wire liner inside of it to keep the wasp out, the bats out. I capped your top cap with some, for lack of a better word, sticky tar tape. Right. And it sealed it in before I put the finished piece on top there. Wonderful. So you're not going to get any rain in there. This was just an afterthought because it gives you a place to store it. Perfect. It's under the weather. It may get damp, but it's not going to get wet. Right. And then when we were done, Tim, we made the door match and set up just like the rest of it. Where if it weren't for the hardware, you really wouldn't know it was there. And you've got a lock on there, so when you get all you need inside, nobody can come and play with it and take it away from you. Oh, by the way, one thing we talked about the the way that you, the way that this is built, we have every opportunity, and I'm going to custom do that for shelves. We can even do a lower grate down here. You put a grate right at the base of it. Mm -hmm. You're right at the heat in the fire. You That's might be able to cook on that. Uh -huh. you step up second stage, third stage, you can hang, hang some hands. up high. Now we're talking about, you know, this is a cold smoker. Yeah. But because we have a, a very, a fairly short flue, yeah. I mean flue liner, we can, we can probably get enough temperature to cook. I'm going to find out. That's a stove. That's a stove. It's an outdoor stove. Yeah. You're going to get some heat out of it if you want it. Yeah. Or you can let it smolder. Well, the next thing that we're going to do is put a, a temperature gauge down here, yep. a temperature gauge up here. Top. We're going to see what we have in there. But the first and most exciting step, now that we're to this stage, this beautiful stage, I've got my charcoal. Now, I'll tell you what I did. I've got some organic charcoal. This is big green egg charcoal. I'm going to use some organic starters. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want any chemicals up here whatsoever. No. We start the charcoals. We get a good base. Then we start set, sticking some damp pieces of hickory in, yeah. and we get to see if this thing draws, which I know it will. Dude, heavenly scent of hickory smoke. Look here, you wanna see something? There's supposed to be smoke in a smokehouse, is there not? Oh, that's, that's right. what I'm talking about. Hands wow. hanging right here. Do you know what I'm talking about? So it's working. Bacon. Wow. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Wow. Dude, you've outdone yourself. I'm gonna have to put something on here tonight. You've heard the old saying, where there's smoke, there must be meat. meat. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yep. I cannot wait. You know, this is really substantial. I mean, it's not going anywhere. 
and I'm going to have fun playing and experimenting. And that's the great thing about any type of cooker or any type of smoker is the learning process. Each one is an individual yeah. and it has its own personality. I can't wait to see what the temperature is down here and I can stoke the fire up too. And you know, it's all a part of, I'm sitting right up here by the harvest cabin. I can come up here and sit on the porch, drink some Kool-Aid, watch the bees yeah. and just chill and while we're meat. cooking. Now again, you do this. I mean, you build, you've built a bar for me downstairs. You've done all kinds of interesting stuff. If somebody wants to contact you, how can they do that? Call me on the cell, 502-640-4236. We got smoke, we got meat, and we ain't scared. Mm. You've outdone yourself. It's, it's a work of art. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Whew. It's hot. Let's finish this later. Let's go to the harvest cabin and talk to our new friend Brenda about heirloom seeds. Sounds good to and me. Maybe plant our own. Okay. All right, we're at the Harvest Cabin today with our new buddy, Brenda Reynolds. Now, I found her on Facebook, and we got to talking back and forth. Next thing you know, I found out she's an artist. Look, she made this basket. It'd take me 2,600 years, and I'd have to use my hands and my feet and my teeth, and I still could not make it. And you're an, art, you're an outdoor artist. I've seen your stuff where you've done, uh, I think I saw musky. So you're multi-talented, but the thing that really got me interested is the fact that you can your own stuff, you put up your own stuff, but even more than that is you've got all these heirloom seeds. Mm -hmm. Some of them very particular to Kentucky, some of them from Texas. But first of all, what is an heirloom seed for those who don't know? It's a seed that's been handed down from generation to generation. And you take like any of your beans or anything, uh, when you plant it this year, then next year, you're gonna get the same thing. So it, it's not a hybrid? No, a hybrid is a seed that has been taken They've taken two different types of seeds and cross-pollinated them. That's your hybrid seed. And then you can't, well, if you took the seeds from those, you... You won't get the same thing as you planted the year before. So this is very valuable to have if you want to continue and hand on. And some of these things have been handed down. Red Bloody Butcher, 105 days, originally from Virginia and grown since 1845. Wow. Great for grinding into flour mm -hmm. or cornmeal and can be eaten corn, as corn on the cob. Mm -hmm as long as it's in the milk stage, you know, before it gets too hard. Grown since 1845. Mm -hmm. This one here is the turkey crawl bean, and the way the story goes with this, that someone killed a turkey, and the beans were in the crawl of the turkey, and they took the beans out and planted them. Wow. And that's how they got their name, turkey crawl bean. All right, now everybody talks about greasy beans. Mm -hmm. Why do they call them greasy beans, and what history do they have it's in Kentucky? It's because the way they look, the bean itself has got like a shiny look to it. Mm -hmm. A lot of your beans are kind of rough, mm -hmm. uh, fuzzy feeling, but no, they're, they're real greasy looking. Mm -hmm. And of course, you've got your white ones and your brown ones. Uh, they, they don't get real big, mm -hmm. but they're really packed with flavor. They're real popular in Kentucky. But now, a lot of people think that your organic seed are heirloom seed, but they're not. The organic part has nothing to do with the seed. It's just how it's been growing. They've not used chemicals or anything on it. Like these right here, the ones that I have grown and saved, they're organic heirlooms because hmm. I don't use chemicals on my food. Right. Let's talk about, I'm looking here at this envelope, Kevin Skaggs from Greenup, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. He says they were brought back from Germany during World War II. So this fella, who went over to fight, he was out there probably in a battle situation. Mm -hmm. He probably saw a garden. He was a farmer. Mm -hmm. He saw, hey, those are good looking beans. Yeah. I guarantee he took those out immediately, dried them, and brought them home. That's yeah. a story in itself mm -hmm. right there. Jess Taylor. Mm -hmm. And a lot, of, a lot of your older beans, the true name of them has been lost, mm -hmm. but a, you take a family that has grown the beans for many years, they will add a person's name mm -hmm. to the bean. All right, let's talk about it's the end of the season. Okay. And you are collecting your beans. Now, most of them, you, I know what you do with them. They end up in a can. <laughs> Always save seed. Always save seed. How do you do that? How do you save the seed <coughs> and get it to this dry stage and make sure, make sure that you have something, a viable okay. plant, uh, seed for next year? Okay. Normally, what you would do, you leave them on your bean vines until the 
the hole turns brown. Mm -hmm. And then you pick them and just tile them out. But if we have a real rainy fall, I pick my beans when they start turning yellow. Mm -hmm. And I put them in a building on the screen and let them dry there. Okay. Because if you leave them out on the bean vine in a lot of rain, they'll sprout in the hole. That ain't good. No, you lose your seed. And there you go, that's all you do. Now that's what about a tomato? Now what about if you have a plant that's, that's, uh, that's very when, moist? Well now your tomato, when your tomato is ripe and ready to eat, you collect the seeds in. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you get the film off of them and, and, well, and dry It's them? recommended that you ferment them, but I have found an easier way around that. Um, they add a little miniature pressure washer. Mm -hmm. And I just spray the seeds off good and then it does the same thing as fermenting them, but in a whole lot less time. And then after you get out, everything out, I just do you put, put them, them out on a, on a paper plate or something like that mm -hmm. and let them dry. And how long do you let them dry before you? I probably let mine dry a week. You and, know, and you then, can tell the feeling of them. And then you put them in a little bag, put mm -hmm. them in the mark them down. Obviously, uh, yeah. it's important to. Yeah, I keep records of all of them. I store mine in the freezer. Mm -hmm. So this is, is this how you store them? Just in a little freezer mm -hmm. bag? You can. And or just, you can put them in a cannon jar. Mm -hmm. But for me, it saves space to put them in bags. Well, thank you so much for coming you're up welcome. today and showing us what you have. This is so cool. And if you're interested in this, get on Facebook and just put up heirloom yeah. seeds. Yeah, heirloom seeds or seed trade. Or yeah. It'll, you'll find them. They're, they're you. all over. Thank you so much. All right. We got a pig pen with no pig in it, so that's a problem. So today I got on Facebook and asked my Facebook friends, where can I find pigs? And somebody messaged me and said, Lawrenceburg Chicken Swap. I'm going to Lawrenceburg right now. I'm going to pick Nikki up, boom. Doug McCanley, Lawrenceburg, Kentucky Chicken Swap 2015. How long has this been going on? I've been running this for four years. For four years. Yeah. Is this weekly, monthly? How does this work? I run it on the first and third Saturday of every month from March till October. Is this a typical crowd? Yes, I usually run about uh, 150 to 300 vendors. Wow. Yes. I'm telling you what, this is such a great idea. What gave you the insp inspiration to have this idea? Well, a lot of people couldn't find the birds that they were looking for, the rabbits, so I said, well, I can just, we'll what, just make something. What a great it. idea. I've already found me a pig. How, are you going to buy it? I'm going to buy it. Great. And then we're looking for uh, for a rooster of some kind. i got a bunch of hens. I need well, we I want one rooster. Pretty roosters. I'm telling you. Yeah. So, hey, first of all, thank you for doing this. Well, thank and you. And good to meet you. Good to meet Watch you. Watch those keys. And uh, we're, we're going to do some shopping. All right, get you a pig. Good idea. got my pig. What kind of pig am I buying? That's that that's a Hampshire Duroc Cross. Okay, and those, those get big. Yes, they do. And they're good eating. Yes, they are. And I'm going to buy it today and take it home. Yes. Who's going to catch it and load it up for me? My daughter. I want to see that. That's okay. going to be fun. Here's your money. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank we'll you. We'll be back after we find our chickens. Okay. Hey, do you come here every time they have this? Or? I do not. I'm usually in Nicholasville. They have a swap also. Gotcha. And so I'm usually there, but I got pigs to get rid of, so here I am. Do you have any more pigs besides that? Uh, not right now. So you're pretty much sold out. But uh, I've got another litter on the way. Aha. Uh -huh. We need to stay in touch. I'll find you one of these swaps. Okay. And I'm going to start buying pigs from you. There you it's go. It's a good looking pig. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anthony's selling chickens today. Anthony, where are you from? Mount Sterling, Kentucky. Mount Sterling, that's a good place to be from. Yeah. Tell us what you got. What different kind of chickens do you have? Uh, we've got barred wine dots, partridge wine dots, and uh, several different varieties of the old English game, and silver duck wings, fawn reds, blue wheatens, wheatens. Nikki asked me what kind of chickens these were right <laughs> Those would be fantail pigeons. Now, what do people do with them? Well, uh, they show them and pretty much just keep them around to, to pretty the place up. She liked the curly wing was what's that over those there? are frill backs frill backs yeah they serve about the same purpose kind of pretty ornamental yeah i'm buying bannies today and then why am i buying bannies for entertainment for entertainment i, I mean we love at. to watch them they're, yeah. they're amusing we're going to put them in with our other chickens 
we have just regular sized hens of all types. Yeah. But they need a they need a uh, guy to. I like hearing the noise too. Yeah. When you got 800 though, the noise kind of gets that noise. 800. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and pay for these. It's right. 25 bucks. I'll be back to get them in a minute. All right. We're we'll still looking back. around. Looky there. Yeah. Here's Marjorie Petunia. She looks like she's taken to her surroundings real well. Now, hopefully, uh, Marge will be large Marge someday. Now that we've got everybody comfortable, Marge is in place. Those are your friends. You guard them just like you guard everybody else. You don't eat them yeah. like you did those four. You in on this conversation too? Don't eat the baby chickens, okay? Those are your friends. You guard them too. Now's a good time to talk about our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it, check out what we're doing, where we're going. Also, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Check out some recipes you may have never seen before. Also, how-to videos on there by the gabillion. We have building a pig pen, raising, butchering rabbits, all that sort of thing. timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and milkweed. See you next week. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by the city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hey, Neil. How are you? How was the trip? With nearly 7 million investors. He's right here. Hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Holly's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.